Hello everybody, this is Russ Buecher with Control My Joystick. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the different 3D connection, uh, six degree of freedom controllers that you can use with Control My Joystick. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to configure those within Control My Joystick and uh, how, uh, you know, what some of the limitations are on these controllers. And uh, we'll kind of compare the, the various models. We'll take a look at these uh, first of all, I have all three of them sitting right here. Okay, now let's take a look at the first controller. This is a Space Navigator. And so the Space Navigator uh, is pretty small. It's the least expensive of the, uh, of the three different uh, controllers that you can get. And, um, and basically it has two buttons, one on the left side, one on the right side. They're a little bit uh, difficult to get at, um, but uh, you uh, can just move the controller puck around like this. And when you want to go up, you just pull it upwards, go down, left, right, forward, backwards, and then you can twist around the yaw axis, roll, and pitch axis as well. So uh, you can use this within Control My Joystick and map this as an analog uh, joystick or a digital joystick uh, into your game. And uh, now there's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the software that comes with the 3D connection. And when you uh, install one of these controllers on your PC, you'll need to install DXWare. Uh, I think it's DXWare 10 is the latest version, and that's basically the driver and all the utilities that come with the controllers. And it's the same for all three of the different controllers. It's, a, it's the same driver software. So when you bring up um, the utility program, and I'm just gonna close control my joystick here. This is utility program that comes with uh, 3DXWare or DXWare. It's called 3D Connection Properties. Let's open it up and take a look. And you know whatever program you're currently running is going to show up here. So um, basically you can use, it has separate settings for these controllers for each application. So if I run it here with, uh, for example, I'm just on the desktop, it has, it will store a configuration file just for the desktop. Control My Joystick takes exclusive control over the controller. So uh, whenever Control My Joystick is running, you'll see it'll say Control My Joystick here. And it is detecting the device that I have plugged in. Now I have all three of these controllers plugged in. I have the, uh, the Space Navigator, and I've got the Space Mouse Pro, and I have the uh, Enterprise. This is their largest controller also the most expensive. It's very nice, has a great wrist rest on it. It's almost a bit of overkill, but uh, it's, it's really nice to use. So it is showing that I have the Space Mouse Enterprise uh, being detected here by the DXWare um, drivers. Actually, all three of these are plugged in at the same time. You could tell they're on because you can see this blue ring of light here, meaning it's, it's active. There's a limitation within the DXWare that really it only properly recognizes one plugged in and it's actually the first one you plug in. So I plugged in the Enterprise first and then the Space Mouse and then the Space Navigator. It's still recognizing the Space Mouse uh, um, Enterprise, which is the first one I plugged in um, as the main one. So that can cause some problems uh, because we can't really tell properly which controller is plugged in. Uh, from the 3D Connection SDK that we use with Control My Joystick. So normally you'll only ever have one plugged in uh, when you are gaming. So but let's take a look at this one first. Now it's got a nice wrist rest on it. So you can just hold it like this. This wrist rest makes a huge difference. It has all these buttons and all these buttons can be mapped. So 
So let's take a look at some of the things we can do with this. You'll notice that there's an, an LCD display up here and you may not be able to read that there, but there's, there's some um, wording up here. It's basically one icon per button. There's 12 buttons up top. And the whole idea here is that uh, the DXWare allows you to, um, for different applications, have different icons and different functions, like maybe in a CAD program. And so when you press this six button here, it corresponds whatever this is. This isn't a touch screen. You have to press the buttons. This is, helps you remember uh, what each button does and then that does an action. Now, Control My Joystick does not use this at all. So uh, we don't even need it on. So what we can do here, if we go to the LCD settings, you can control the brightness. And I'm just gonna turn the brightness down. And I just turn it off completely when I'm using this, if I'm not using it for, um, for gaming. And although if I go back into another application, maybe like a CAD program, and you could set the LCD brightness for that to back up higher. So, okay, I'm just gonna hit okay. So another thing we can do here is go into advanced settings and we'll just leave these alone. You don't need to adjust these. All these have been preset by a Control My Joystick XML files that ships with the Control My Joystick installer and it's installed in this folder here, your username, app data, roaming, 3D connection, 3DXWare config. So whenever you uh, use the controller with a program, for example, if I was to start up Chrome, uh, it may create another XML file for it or any other program. If that XML file was not already created and shipped with the DXWare software. So we ship this control my joystick XML file. Uh, with the Control My Joystick installer because we have it full of all sorts of goodies that we need to properly uh, map all the buttons and the motion on the controller puck here uh, into Control My Joystick. So we, if you see that there, just, just leave it there. That's It should be there. Okay, so we just don't change anything here. And then if you go up to uh, Buttons, keep them all set for application use, because that means our application control my joystick can decide what the button will do. And it could be that in control my joystick, you want a certain button press, maybe the button number one, to um, maybe uh, open up a map or do something in the game. But we do want to disable the on-screen display, and I'll just demonstrate what that is. So uh, now you see these buttons up top here, and the Pro also has these one, two, three, four. These are very special buttons. And what they do is if you press and hold it, it brings up this on-screen display. Just to kind of remind you what these buttons have been mapped to, but we're not using these at all. And the last thing you, uh, well, I should say, we are using the buttons, but we're not using uh, these uh, where it says application use, we're not changing the text in here and we're not putting anything on the LCD screen. So we don't want this to pop up at all. We just want to be able to press one button in game and it does something in the game, but not bring up this thing. So all you need to do is you need to click on disable on screen display. I'll just show you what that looks like on the pro. So I have the pro, press the button. This one looks um, a little bit different. It's only four buttons here. We'll go in here and go disable on-screen display. Close. Now when I press the button, it doesn't pop up anymore. So that's a good thing. So on the Enterprise, just to review, we basically turn down the brightness of the LCD and we disabled the on-screen display. Okay, let's take a look at these other ones. Um, well, while I still have it here, you'll see that when I move the stick around, you can see that the axis is responding to the inputs here, the indicators. And if I press a button, you'll see that uh, it shows here. So if I press the button number one, which I'll press it right now, see it's immediate. If I press maybe a button over here like delete, immediate, V1, was a little bit different. So these three buttons here on the Enterprise they're delayed, so you, you press it down. So I'll start pressing it now. And you'll see 
the button listed right here. So V1, press now, delay, and there it is. So if you wanted something, you know, maybe to map this to a game function that you don't want to accidentally hit uh, because it might be serious, maybe like boosting um, in Elite Dangerous or some other thing uh, that you just, you know, if you accidentally touch the button that you don't want it to uh, to do anything, well, you can uh, you can map it to these. So if you need to press and hold for something to occur, then then that's what you want. Okay. Not sure if that made any sense, but so all these buttons are pretty good. Uh, now the the tricky part with using the buttons here is if you're really maybe flying something around, and uh, you generally need your fingers on the on the puck. Uh, it's difficult to to figure out which button is which. Uh, some of them have little bumps on them that you can kind of feel so you know what button it is. Get, help get yourself oriented. Uh, but it's it can be somewhat difficult to reach and uh, grab a button. So um, because I'm using my left hand on the controller, um, really it's just this quadrant of buttons that I use. Um, because to reach over here with my pinky or something like that, plus I can't see them, it can be very difficult. So really, although it has all these buttons, if you're flying something and need your hand on the controller, you'll probably wind up using only, only these on this side. Okay, so that's the Enterprise. So here's the one I use the most. This is the Space Mouse Pro. And... Uh, this is very good. It's their mid-price controller, and uh, it's very well made. It has less buttons, but you know, it's, it pretty well has enough buttons, I think. In a more complex game like Elite Dangerous, between voice commands and the buttons here, it's you're easily able to do all the functions. So the only real difference here is that top LCD panel and the number of buttons up top. You know, and the total number of buttons. Otherwise, it's the same controller puck. You also have a wrist rest. It's a little bit smaller, but I think it's just as comfortable as the Enterprise. So this one is quite good. Now we also have the Space Navigator. Now this is the first one I bought probably about five years ago. And I started gaming with this and I built control my joystick basically to use this because I looked at this and some of the space games that I was playing. And I thought this would be a perfect controller to control a spaceship because spaceships often have a thrust that go up and down and side to side and forward and backwards in addition to the turning and pitching and the yawing. So um, anyway, so I wrote control my joystick to work with this. And it worked pretty good other than, other than two problems. One was buttons. There's only two buttons on this thing. And so if you hope to map any buttons to it, this really isn't a good controller for that because when you are using the controller here, it's, you could reach over and you could press a button, but the buttons are kind of difficult to press. They're very, very thin and uh, they don't press well, not nearly as nice as the other two controllers. So, and uh, the left button, if you're using this in your left hand is even worse because you have to press it with maybe your pinky finger and uh, so the buttons aren't really that useful on it you, know, you wouldn't want to map these buttons for anything you need to use immediately in game it, if you have if you could take your hands off the controller and then press them all that maybe that's okay now the other problem with it was there's no wrist rest and that makes a big difference because your wrist is down here and you kind of have to keep your hand up like this and so you first of all resting your wrist on your desk or whatever and then having to continually hold your hand up and uh, it's tough on the wrist and if anything you know maybe uh, you could rest your hand on a book um, I actually at one time pr 3d printed a wrist rest out of plastic that went all the way around this and kind of looked like the uh, the space mouse pro and that wasn't too bad uh, it wasn't the greatest though if you're going to use one of these you really will need to improvise a wrist rest when you make that wrist rest, you also have to have a way to prevent this from lifting up. So if you are doing things that you require the sixth degree of freedom, meaning pulling up on it, which is translation upwards on the Z axis, say maybe th thrusters going upwards on your spaceship, you want your spaceship to rise. It's very easy to 
lift up on this and then reach the end of the controller range of movement and then lift this. And, uh, you know, if you're in the middle of doing something uh, in a hurry, you'll wind up with trying to control your controller like this. It'll be up in the air, which is not the greatest. Uh, maybe it's just me, but uh, I usually wind up out of control with my spaceship when I'm doing that. So, you know, if you had a wrist rest that also kind of held it down, or you had another way to hold it down, maybe with uh, some kind of tape, maybe that would be okay. There is a rubber backing here, and it's there's a bit of an indentation, so... You know, if you had kind of maybe something in here that held it down, it would be okay. Um, I'm not too sure if you could use a really strong magnet. This is heavy metal here, uh, but the magnet might mess up the functionality inside this controller. So this is the least expensive controller though, but you know, for basically a hundred dollars more, you get the Space Mouse Pro and it's worth every penny if you're going to go down this road. Now this too, uh, kind of, repeat what I talked about earlier and having all of these controllers plugged in at the same time, you can see here that uh, I have control my joystick up and I can use my space navigator. See if I can fit all these in here. Uh, my space navigator, you can see uh, that it is moving around the indicators on the axis. Okay. And so is this, the space navigator is moving around, the space mouse pro is moving them around and the enterprise, no problem. But the, when you have them plugged in simultaneously, and this is a limitation of the SDK, if I was to press this button here, it comes, it says invalid. And if I suppress these buttons on this one, also invalid. That's messed up. The only ones where they're valid are in the controller that I plugged in first to USB. So if I was to unplug all these and plug in the space navigator first, well, it would recognize those buttons properly. So if you plug in multiple ones, you know, they all, kind of merge the the controller input it all looks at one controller like one controller so you really can only use one controller plugged in at a time with control my joystick if you're hoping to have maybe one of these on the left hand and maybe one of these on the right hand that's not going to work so that's it that's uh, how to configure and set up the 3d connection controllers with Control my joystick. Have fun.